Thanks for joining us for today's message. We encourage you to visit southernhills.church to watch or listen to past messages. We hope that you enjoy today's message from God's Word. Today we have a special opportunity. When I was 14 years old, um, I went to a camp, a Christian camp, where I met a kid who was my age. And from that very early moment, I began to find a kindred spirit, someone who had a very similar life experience to me. He was a pastor's kid. Someone who, from a very young age, though not perfect, also wanted to grow up and become a pastor. That was my story, and that was his. His, his name also was Josh. He was also five foot one. <laughs> and from that early age, we developed a bond, a friendship. He is now the pastor of Ambassador Baptist Church in Fresno, California. Uh, I came, and I'm obviously the pastor at Southern Hills Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada, and God has allowed our friendship to continue. W I, a few months ago, uh, Pastor Josh Ermler in Fresno preached a sermon that was incredibly powerful and very different from anything that I had ever heard, not doctrinally, but method. It, very interesting. And I thought to myself, how amazing would it be to bring Josh down and have him preach that sermon here? And so today, a very special guest. Why don't you welcome with me today, Pastor Josh Ermler from Fresno, California. Josh, would you come? Well, how are we doing, Southern Hills? Ready for church? Awesome. Well, I'm telling you what, this, is, uh, this building is unbelievable. How many, of you, how many of you are still excited about this place that God allowed you to get in here? This is unreal. I had the privilege of preaching here probably your first or second year after you started the church back at the other property before you had done the expansion. And I'm just going to say, you guys have come a long way uh, over the last few years. And to, to God be the glory. Amen. And uh, you guys have a great church. Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure you hear this, but literally there are churches and pastors all over the country that are regularly watching what this church does, what you do. And the faith that you demonstrate, the sacrifice that you put into making this what it is. And uh, you really are a model church, not just here in Las Vegas, but literally around the country. And uh, I'm just so thankful for your guys' testimony, uh, for your faith, and for your ongoing sacrifice and generosity, not just to reach the world here, but to make an impact. Uh, even in Fresno, as we're learning things from you guys and in other states, as we're gleaning um, and learning from what God is doing here in this place. And then I'm super thankful for your pastor. And as he said a moment ago, we have been friends. We're pushing about 25 years now, I think. And it's, it's hard to believe because we're still so young, you know. But... Uh, <laughs> We're getting there. We're, we're moving up. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed. They're starting to get some gray hair. Are you starting to get some gray hair in, or is this just, is this just me? And uh, I thought for a moment, maybe instead of preaching this morning, I could just tell a whole lot of really good stories about when Josh was a teenager. How many of you would like that? Just, uh, we just I thought about it. Then I thought, man, then he could tell a lot of stories about me, too. And when he comes to our church, it just wouldn't have worked. So, you know. Uh, we'll just keep that there. Well, today is Memorial Day, and we're so thankful for the sacrifice that so many have made so we can enjoy the freedoms that we have as Americans. But what I want to do this morning is I want to take a moment and talk about the sacrifice, probably the greatest sacrifice that has ever been made uh, on our behalf, and, and that's the sacrifice made by Christ on the cross of Calvary. Now, there are a lot of different views in regards to who Jesus is. In fact, recently I was looking at a, uh, watching a CNN article, and the uh, name of the program was called Finding Jesus, Fact or Forgery? Uh, Time Magazine did an article entitled The Search for the True Jesus. Uh, Discovery Channel did a uh, program called who was the real Jesus anyways? In fact, even the infamous atheist Richard Dawkins recently wrote an article, and the name of the article was this. If Jesus was alive today, he would be an atheist. So, as we watch 
these programs, as we turn on the news, as we go to different articles, we hear about what authors and atheists think Jesus is. We, we've heard from university presidents as to who they think Jesus is. We've heard from clergy and pastors. We've heard from churches and denominations as to who Jesus is. But the question I want to pose to you this morning is, who does the Bible say that Jesus is? Isaiah chapter number 55 verse 11 says that God's word will not return void. So when I was reading this verse, I came up with an idea to do something very unique. So here's what I would like to do. This morning, I'm going to preach what is referred to as a scripture sermon. You say, what, is, what does that mean? It means the entire sermon is going to be nothing but scripture. 100% Bible. No stories, no illustrations, no jokes, no antidotes, no alliterations, no lists, just the Bible. And we're going to find out what the scriptures say regarding who Jesus was. I'll be splitting this sermon up into what I'm referring as three acts. Acts number one will be the incarnation of Jesus. Then we'll go to act number two, which will be the crucifixion of Jesus. And then act three, the resurrection of Jesus, as we discover who Jesus is from the Bible. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll dive into the sermon. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege and opportunity, Lord, that you've given me to be here this morning. We thank you for the sacrifice that was made by so many so we could have the freedoms that we enjoy today. Lord, I'm praying and I'm asking that you would remind us afresh and anew of the sacrifice that you also made so we could enjoy the spiritual liberties and freedoms that we have as believers. I pray that you'd bless this morning. Lord, I pray that your word would not return void that it would accomplish what you set it forth to accomplish. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Act 1, the incarnation of Jesus. In the beginning, God. God created the heavens and the earth. And in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For by Jesus Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And an angel of the Lord appeared, saying, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And so Joseph went up from Galilee into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And when they saw his star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And where they, when they came into the house where they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell down and worshipped him. For in Jesus Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so God was manifest in the flesh that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the prophets where it says be strong and fear not behold your God will come and save you how will we know he has come when the eyes of the blind are open and the ears of the deaf hear when the lame man leap as a deer and the tongue of the mute shall sing and Jesus said I and my heavenly father are one I am come that they might have 
life and that they might have it more abundantly. By Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the ways of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. We all do fade as a leaf, and our sins like the wind have taken us away. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on Christ of us all. For you know not what shall be tomorrow. For what is your life? Is it e it's even as a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. As for man, his days are like the grass. The wind passeth over it and it's gone. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to build up and a time to break down, a time to dance, and a time to mourn, a time to laugh, and a time to weep, a time to be born, and a time to die. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in even just one point, he shall be guilty of all sin. And as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For the wages and punishment of sin is death. So the Lord will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And death and hell will be cast into a lake of fire. This is the second death. And they shall be cast out into utter darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, and the smoke of their torment shall ascend forever and ever. But... But to them that are joined to the living, there is hope. For the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For you see, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. For God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Act 2, the crucifixion. Christ was despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And Jesus fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will be done. So Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Then Pilate said unto the multitude, 
what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all said unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out the more saying, crucify him, crucify him. Then answered all the people and said, let his blood be on us and on our children. So when Pilate had whipped Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And so they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had made a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and they placed a reed in his hand and they bowed before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And he spit on him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his raiment on him and led him away to be crucified followed him a great multitude of people and of women which bewailed and lamented him but Jesus turning to them said daughters of Jerusalem weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children and as they came along they found a man of Cyrene Simon by name and him they compelled to bear Jesus' cross and they came unto a place called Golgotha. That is to say, the place of the skull. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the people stood before but the ruler scoffed Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. An inscription was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, saying, This is the king. So they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the prophets. And Jesus, and it was about the ninth hour, and they were watching him there. And there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which being interpreted is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And after Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, certainly, this was the Son of God. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, Jesus, shall many be made righteous. For God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Act 3 the resurrection. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, some women came unto the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They entered in, 
but found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed, behold, the two men stood by them in shining garments. And as the women were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth. And the angel said to them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but is risen. Then Jesus then showed himself alive with his, through his crucifixion with many infallible proofs, being seen of the disciples 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, I am he that was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death, for I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he hath loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath made us alive together with Christ, for by grace we are saved. And Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I am the door. By me if any enter in, he shall be saved. And not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saves us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For the, he that hath the Son of God hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever believeth in him should not have eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things shall be passed away and in his presence is fullness of joy neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved these things have I written unto you that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye might believe on the name of the Son of God for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, who will have all men to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and 
one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If God has used this message to impact your life, we would love to hear from you. Please send an email to connect at southernhills.church. If you would like to support this ministry financially, you can do so at southernhills.church slash give. We are always encouraged to hear how God is using this church in Las Vegas to reach people around the world. 